everyone so i'm upgrading my garden cameras and i'm going up um i've used sv3c again these are what all my cameras in the house are now in the garden car park oh, this is just around that's a nice touch how many companies should give you tweezers and don't so you can get the SD card in and out a lot easier that's a, that's a great idea so we've got the quick start we'll go through that after we have the camera which is a bit of a beast if I can get it out of here there we go so I mean look at all the infrared settings and the lights on there wowzers yeah it's complete metal it's very well made they've i've had these up for four or five years and not had any problems um the one over the car park now is showing its age so i thought it was time to replace it so we're going to replace it with this one and then we've got power supply which comes with a uk plug which is great because some of the cheaper ones you don't get the plug and it has the obligatory LAN cable you really only need this when you're setting it up as you will see okay so i've just plugged it in it's now doing a self test so everything spins round okay, so i'm using um, p2p client 6524 this is what i use for all my camera systems this is the one that we're going to be adding today so what we do is we go in as admin and we search for cameras now the new one i know by the ip address because all my others are set um, by i've set them manually starting from 88 and that one's s uh, the ssak is 192.168.03 so what we do then is we add this camera not yet you need to tick it sorry tick the box I want it as outside because it's going to be an outside camera so we highlight outside and we put add and it's now put it in there now we need to configure it because obviously all the parameters in the camera are wrong so what we do we open up a web browser we've got um we need that ip address now i forgot what it was right 192.168.0.33 but we go back to the browser i'll scroll this down a bit so you can see so we're at 192.168.0.33 in your browser bar. The login is admin and then the default password is admin for this system, the way I do it. So we do admin, admin. Obviously you need to change that. Um, this is just my robo forms. So I'll set up software and PC view. If we do PC view, we get to preview the camera. Preview the camera. And I can hear myself talking on it. I've just muted my PC. So this is what the camera is currently seeing. I have turned all the lights off while I set it up. So. We've got H265 main profile. That's too. I want it as 1440. Uh, 1920 is a bit too high, real frames per second. So you get that nice time lapse effect. Um, I'm going to actually bring that down to 10 and apply that. So the on screen display, um, put in the camera name where you want it to be called. So for now, we'll just call this Garden 2023, just so I know at a glance which one it is when I've got it up. And you can change where that goes. Um, you can change the illumination. Wide dynamic wide range dynamic is a WDR. WDR. It should actually it tell you what that does and what it means. Um, wide dynamic, dynamic range, range can range usually make the images brighter if you're in a very dark place, place. But to be honest, yeah. most of the time, most you, the time you don't want them on. Um, your night vision, um, night we want full colour, and that should and use that should the um, LEDs. And LEDs. And there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh. Yeah, you saw it flash yeah, up then. So now it's put lights on. This is a network. So. Personally, I always put a fixed IP address and that way I know exactly where all my cameras are, as you saw before, when I loaded um, the actual software up there. 
so I'm going to make this 95. So we'll go back here and we want fixed IP address 95. Your, your primary DNS should also be the same as your main router address, which is the gateway, and your secondary DNS 8888-1111-4444. They'll use some of the other um, DNS services like Google, um, and the others that I can't think the name of, but you don't really need to worry about them. So we'll apply that. And now what's happened now, the port's changed. So we have to go up here now and we change that 33 oh, to 95. And we're in. So we've got admin, admin again, because I've not changed that yet. And we're in. So we now have a dynamic IP address. So we now look for a wireless, okay? So we search for wireless. This should browse a so mesh network. So they're all pretty good, to be honest. They're all got good connections. So I'm going to join that one. Um, you put your key in. This is your Wi-Fi key. Now, before you hit apply, always check the retype key of is error. Okay, so I've typed something in wrong there. Check that. I can't bloody read that because it's too small. So let's make that bigger. Hello. My lordy, that's shocking. It's trying to translate it. Authorization required. So for some reason, it's logged me out. So we'll put admin, admin in again. Checking Wi-Fi, please wait about 30 seconds. Right, so connected successfully. So now we can hit apply. And now I can pull the LAN cable out. And the camera is ready to go wireless. But if I add that camera, oh, we've already added it, haven't we? So in here now we add, we put the username for the camera, not what's shown on the screen. So you can give it a different name on here. So we'll cut again, we'll keep it the same. So in the match garden 2023, no space there. Um, we've still got that as admin admin. I'll just make sure that is admin. Like I said, you do need to change that. Once you've got your camera set up at this point, log into this software, into the back end, change the password on the user tab. And then when you put the camera in here, put the new password in. So then when we go to cameras and we click this little box down here. It must be a bit of a flipping software. So now you can see it there. And then you double click that camera and it goes to full screen. Now, like I say, you've got to remember to right mouse click here on the one that you're recording and set that to max. Otherwise, it will use stream two. So I... Look at that quality. That's stunning. So what we're going to do now, we're going to see how, how far in it will zoom. And that's quite a lot. Wow. That's amazing, isn't it? I am very happy with that. I can watch my fish. Assuming we can go even more. So let's go on something a bit further away. Let's zoom out a minute. So just hold the zoom out button. It's been digging in my garden here. It's been a cat or a bird. Uh, let's have a look. Right, so let's go for that. Um, there. 
anywhere around there. Let's see how far in I can take it. Down there we go. Wow. But great for watching wildlife, wouldn't it? We've got the birds out. Quality is fantastic, and we've got a times 15 zoom on that. I'm not telling it to autofocus, it's doing that on its own, which is fantastic. I think that's it, yeah, 15 times. That's incredible. Can't imagine you'd need more than that, to be honest, on a 2K camera, because it's already closer than a 1080p because of the way the lens works. I'm having a few issues with this software today, but it might need a clean install because it's had cameras added and removed over the last year or so. Because I've upgraded all my cameras to FV3C now. There we go, that's it. That's going automatically now. That is your field of view. The other thing to do, if you're using Wi-Fi, then obviously you don't want this getting water in it. So what we do, we use this end cap with the washer and always put a little bit of cable in. It doesn't have to be network cable, just any cable that plugs that hole. And then when you screw that on there, onto that, it actually makes that waterproof and it also stops any spiders and things making it their home. So just put a bank 
little bit of blanking cable in it or silicon sealant, anything like that once you seal it up and that just makes that then waterproof.